name is Peter Davis. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to do this over and over again because what I'm going to tell you is so upsetting to me I can't keep myself straight and on track. Um, uh, November 19th, 2007, I was assaulted by four U.S. Army National Guardsmen at a convenience store with the assistance of the clerk who wouldn't help me. Police were called after they screamed and yelled that they were going to kill me, you fucking fag, we're going to kill you, you fucking fag. Because I had this coat on, these clothes on, and this little bit of makeup because I was singing at a local restaurant slash cocktail lounge just down the street from where I live. I walk there, I walk home. It's my escape, if you will, my fantasy land. And coming home from that bar at about 12.15, 12.30 that morning, I stopped at a convenience store a few blocks from my home. And four U.S. Army National Guardsmen were in the store. My coat caught their attention. And then they saw the makeup. They saw the black eyeliner. I was instantly a fag and a problem. It lasted for about five minutes in the store. When they screamed and yelled, one of them screamed and yelled, I'm going to kill you, you fucking fag. We're going to kill you, you fucking fag. The girl, obviously the girlfriend, grabbed him screaming, are you crazy? Stop it! Stop it! Get out! Let's leave! Stop it! And I thought it was over. Because she pushed him out of the store. But it wasn't over. I paid for my two chicken taquitos and two corn dogs. And they were waiting. They were still in their car waiting two cars and they waited for me and they they attacked me right at the door I came out they were there clerk watched all of it he never once helped me and they took me to the pavement and I thought they were killing me I thought they were gonna kill me I thought they were stabbing me I just closed my eyes and rolled into a ball to protect my face and my head and my torsos, because I thought they were stabbing me. And I heard a car. And it was someone coming into the drive, and that's when they stopped. And I saw a wheel coming towards my head, and it was them. They were going to run me over. And I rolled out of the way and ran to the exterior phone. And uh, called, of course, 911. And talking to the 911 operator, she said, The clerk is on the phone. And I look in the store, and he's on the phone. Well, he's finally on the phone. He watched it all. I screamed the license plate over and over. And that clerk turned on me. He wasn't my witness. He wanted me to die, and he wanted to watch it. The officers that came didn't do anything. They believed him. This is in a convenience store. There's a surveillance tape. Never once was a consideration to look at that tape and to find out who was lying and to find out what happened to me. I have a seizure disorder, anxiety and stress make that happen. 
And I knew it was going to be the worst seizure of my life. And I told the officers, you're scaring me to death. And I'm going to have the worst seizure of my life and you're not going to know what to do. I have to get home to my partner. He'll know what to do because I'm scared of you. i got to get out of here. Of course, I was far more hysterical than this. <laughs> and then they came to the home an hour later and arrested me for domestic violence when my husband was calling for an ambulance after the seizure and I was knocked out with a gash in my head right on my eye. It's in the mug shop with this. There's a whole lot with this. No one will help me. Nothing's been done. I won that domestic violence case. They tortured me for nine months. They terrorized me in jail. I did nothing wrong. And still today, nothing is being done. And I hear from an attorney that just recently heard about this. Finally somebody heard me. He has concerns about some underlying scary stuff here. It's probably what's wrong. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I'm scared to death and I'm hoping somebody can relate to this. And maybe they can help me and Roscoe. Whoa. Tell about the judge. There's a uh, court appearance. Me trying to get a new attorney because my attorney wasn't going to work for me. I was guilty and I was going to do the time. And I said, no, I'm not. Here's all the proof right here. First time I see him. I've got everything that he needs. All my medical documentation of years of treatment therapy. And the judge denied me legal counsel, changing attorneys, accused me of using the legal system as my whatever, claiming that I have some kind of long history of it. It's the second time I've ever had a court-appointed attorney in my life. Never had I called the Oregon State Bar before in my life. But I did once to find out what am I going to do. My attorney says he isn't going to do anything for me. He looked at my documents the proof of me in my life and said, I don't care. I can't believe this is my country. I can't believe this happened to me. I've been frozen since it happened. I don't know who I am anymore. When I won that case, I went directly home as fast as I could. And I got on the phone to call the DA's office, crying, hysterical. I won. I told you I was innocent. Now how are you going to help me fix this? How are you going to help me get those men and that woman that tried to kill me? They're going to do it to somebody else. And they threatened to arrest me for harassment. And that nothing ever happened. And you are guilty. This is crazy. The judge that saw this case and ruled on this case 